Hello YouTube, it's me again. And as promised, we are getting ready to do our How to Clean a Revolver video. Now, this one is a 357 Magnum. I'm a hammerless. Safety check. Nothing there. Which, of course, with this swung out, it there's no way it can fire. There's nothing in the chamber. Because these are your chambers. But one thing I do want to note is when you close it, try to close it by the crane. Index it with your finger. Don't do the cowboy thing where you spin it around and flip it. Because you will you run a very good risk of destroying your firearm. So, revolvers are very simple. One of the reasons why I mean, they are such still so popular. There's not really a whole lot to them. You have your safe. You have your release. Push it. I mean, some of them push forward. Some of them pull back. This one pushes forward. Swing your cylinder out. You have your ejector rod and your ejector star. That pushes your spent cartridges out. Now the old style ones made like I mean, made like the old single action Colts. You have a gate on this side. With a I'm a ejector, then you eject each one individually. This is the mo more modern style with your star rod. Of course, this one is a five shot. I think I already mentioned 357 Magnum, which will shoot a 38 special round. So, revolvers are dead bang simple. There's no safeties on it to complicate. It's basically load it. When needed, squeeze the trigger. And as I said, this is a this one is a double action only firearm. You can't cock the hammer. You have to fire it just by squeezing the trigger. But I probably rambled on a little too much about them. But you have to know a little bit about it before you can so you can handle it safely. Now, that's the, the difference between cleaning one of the cleaning a revolver and cleaning a semi-automatic like the 1911 I showed you is you basically have to treat each of these as its own barrel. So it's a five shot, so it's basically like cleaning a six barrel pistol. So to get started. This one here has not been fired since I cleaned it, I believe, last time. So we will follow the same procedure. So goes a patch. Now, I mentioned in my previous video, if you can, try not to go from the muzzle. Not really that much of an option on some firearms like this one. So you just cover, cover it and run your patch. You can take and scrub a little bit. And as you can see, that barrel is clean. Came out looking just as good as it went in. So now, and this is where the revolver differs, is you want to patch each cylinder. Which, of course, if you have fired it recently each of these cylinders will come out dirty like the barrel would probably wouldn't need to brush the cylinders down like you would the barrel with the um, um, little wire brush that I showed in the previous video but you, at the very least, want to give them all a good patching so that, I believe I got all of them, I think. Oh, there we go. I know I got them all now. 
but you always want to do that. Now, the next thing I like to do with a revolver is take me another clean patch, soak it in oil, and this is kind of a two-handed operation, is I like to push the ejector star up and take and just try to clean underneath here and get as, that as clean as you can because this is one of the few areas where a revolver will jam is that if you end up with enough residue as far as you know burnt powder dust and dirt and grit it can actually hold this little ejector star from seating all the ways and if it doesn't seat all the ways it can eventually end up being stuck out far enough that when your cylinder tries to rotate it will actually bind the cylinder which would cause it which would be basically a jam so you'd have to swing it out try to you know move it by hand or whatever it regardless it's bad it causes the firearm not to function correctly so that would be one of the ways that a good old trust revolver could possibly jam on you. Oh, then same thing with here. Just take another clean patch, soak it all, give it a good wipe down. Now, one thing I'd like to note is that this one actually is ported, which is kind of neat because the idea is that at the end, it being a snubby anyways, the idea is that it takes and allows some of the gas to escape and expand up and back, which kind of counteracts the muzzle flip. Because when you fire it, it's going to want to come up. That is actually venting gas this way, which pushes back down this way to hopefully make it more manageable to shoot with hot rounds. Which, I have fired this one. It's not a bad, bad shooting gun. The trigger's a little different than what... I mean, the trigger pull is different than what I'm used to. I'm used to shooting things like I mean, my high point, which is striker fired, and the 1911, which is single action only. You know, that might be a good topic for a video, is difference, difference in I mean, firearms actions. Let him know down in the comments if you want him to do that. Make a video of that. But, yes. But, same thing as, you know, with the 1911 that I showed you. You just generally want to make sure you go through. Wipe everything down. Try to get all the little nooks and crannies. You know, clean it up. Make it shine. Make it pretty. Everybody likes a shiny gun. Now, we've got that cleaned. I'm going to take and run a dry patch down my barrel. And I'm going to run a dry patch down each cylinder. Now, the reason you want to dry patch a barrel or cylinder, and this goes with a semi-auto as well. You always want to dry patch your um, uh, your barrel before um, uh. now if it's going into long-term storage yeah you might you know want to leave a film of oil to protect your bore and your rifling but if it's something that's going to be a service um, uh, gun you want to make sure to dry patch it. And the reason behind that is, is that if you have a bunch of oil that, that is built up, you know, that's sitting in the chamber of the firearm, down the barrel, when you fire that round, it can actually cause it to build excess pressure and ca cause an overpressure event. By just going ahead, you know, wipe it down, you know, 
you shouldn't really if it's a service if it's a service gun you should be doing routine maintenance anyways so it's not going to hurt it you know to kind of you know when you wipe it it's still going to have that thin film but it's not going to have excess is the idea behind it now same thing with the revolver all your moving parts you want to put a little bit of lube on so right here on the crane put just a little bit now put a little on this side here and then we're just going to work it back and forth to get that worked in there good that way everything moves smoothly and freely which this is why I always wipe down at the very end it is so that way any excess that kind of runs off from working things like this here take and put some on your ejector rod work it in which this is why you use a gun oil gun oils are typically light I know I'm a, I've had rim oil 301 I'm a gun oil is good to use put a little bit around there and like I said, just work it back and forth. Get it worked in there good. Give it a chance to spread around. And then, of course, that's going to lube in there. That moves really nice. So then, right here, on our firing pin, just put a little bit on there. And then, it's going to be a little, a little bit more tricky because, which you could do it differently than this, but just a little squirt, a little squirt, ease that off. Now, okay. Which I know I'm not really, I don't know, most of your new firearms, you can dry fire them a little bit and it not hurt them. I mean, you could technically, you know, a couple of times to work it and not hurt the gun. I personally just don't like dry firing. It's, you know, I guess I kind of grew up with, you know, don't dry fire it because it's bad for it. You'll break the, and in the older ones you can. I'm going to end up breaking your I mean, firing pin doing that. I generally try to avoid dry firing. But I don't remember whether I wiped the whole gun down with oil or not. So we're just going to take this patch and... If I did it. You did. I did? Mm hmm Oh, okay. No. I think you did. <laughs> We're making sure it's clean. Which, this one, I believe, is stainless. So, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about it rusting. But, and then... Same thing as with the semi-auto. Just whenever I'm done with it, wipe excess off the surface of it. You generally want to try to avoid getting oil on the grip or in the trigger guard if you can. Let's see. Oh, something else that... Right down here, your little lock lug... Give that a little, a little squirt too, which you can see it doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit. But that should have that pretty well lubed up. As you can see, it moves well. So, that's basically got that 
cleaned up. It's lubed. That's really all there is to it. There's not really anything to take apart. There's just a few key areas to remember to clean in and around and under. You know, give it a little shot of lube. You know, that... A revolver has the reputation of being a tank, so to speak. You know, when nothing else will run, the revolver will. There's very few things that will actually jam up a revolver. Like I said, one of the things that I do know of is, you know, dirt and grime. I'm a getting under the ejector star, but I mean, you have to fire hundreds and hundreds of rounds and never clean the thing before you get enough to affect it, you know? And then, you know, short of that, you basically have to have a mechanical breakage for one of these things to stop running. They're just a really solid, easy-to-use platform while they're still popular today. There's not a whole lot to them. Like I said, swing your cylinder out, unload it, Run you a patch through all your bores. Make sure your cylinders are clean. Wipe it down. You know, put a little lube on your crane. Make sure you clean under your eject ejector star. Make sure you lube your ejector rod. Put your little lube on your trigger tr or on your hammer mechanism. Wipe it down and it's good to go. So... That really, folks, is all there is to taking care of one of these. You know, great for, you know, if you're not experienced with a gun, they're great. You know, you don't really have that many moving parts to worry about. There's not a complicated takedown procedure. You know, all in all, a revolver is a good solid choice, especially if you're just getting into handguns. So, before I get too rambly, I believe I will end it here. Thank everybody for watching. Or, er, that was broken English. Thank you everyone for watching. Hit the like or subscribe button if you want to see more content. And I'll see everybody in another video.